Good late afternoon, everybody. Hope your day went well. And it's time to start talking about some free agents, some players who are available who might be able to help the Seahawks in their upcoming games. So after having a couple of days to think about what happened on Sunday in that Colts game, we have a pretty good idea of what things may have not worked so well and what things may be a problem in upcoming games due to injury. Uh, specifically, we saw that the center position was a bit of a problem for us and that we have some injuries at wide receiver that could come back to hurt us in the next couple games we play. So I think those two things are probably first and foremost in the minds of Seahawks fans as we go through this week. Will we bring in any outside help? Now, there is one particular name that this video is going to really take a good look at, but before I get into that, Austin Ryder is now off the market, and I know some Seahawks fans wanted to bring him in. I know that the Seahawks fans who didn't want to bring him in were still aware of his existence and thought that it was at least a possibility of a solution. A uh, solution no longer. The Saints lost their starting center for about six weeks. They actually had quite a few injuries in that Green Bay game. I think uh, Lattimore got injured as well. So they brought in Austin Ryder, and they they signed him. So he is now off the market. I know some people are going to be a little disappointed. He is definitely a name that came to my mind quite a few times this offseason. But as time went on, it became clear to me that he can't be that good if this many teams are passing him up over and over and over again. The fact that he was still available after week one tells you most of what you should need to know. So clearly there was a lack of interest there, and clearly he's not as good as his track record would tell you. Um, he started for Kansas City for a few years, and he posted good PFF grades. He was part of great offenses, but clearly there was something there that we we didn't care for it and no other team in the NFL cared for it until they were forced to. So that's that. But let's talk about something that could actually happen and it's a little I don't know. It's it's a little bit out there to even bring this up maybe, but I have to do it. That's right. We're back on the Josh Gordon Express. So Adam Schefter tweeted this out a little bit ago. The NFLPA determined Josh Gordon has successfully completed his NFL monitored treatment program and has recommended to the NFL that he be reinstated per sources. Gordon is awaiting final approval from NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell, but he is said to be ready to play and vaccinated. Okay, so now... The NFLPA's job is to look out for the players in all circumstances. So they have a vested interest in trying to get Josh Gordon back onto the field. So them saying that he should be reinstated, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. It is entirely possible that the NFL feels differently about Josh Gordon and they may have a justifiable reason for doing so. The NFLPA often defends players in cases where there is no real defense for them because that's what they do. However, if you take a look at the way the NFL relaxed their marijuana laws this offseason and the ways in which they should be looking at the Josh Gordon situation in a new light, it makes a lot of sense that he should probably be reinstated. That doesn't mean they will. If there's ever a guy who's going to have an issue getting past his, you know, previous infractions, it'll be Josh Gordon because he, uh, he's he got a lot of problems in his history. So if there's ever going to be a guy that the NFL just decides, you know what, I, I, I know we're relaxing it for everybody else, but this guy's just too much, then it would be Josh Gordon. However... Based off what I'm seeing, I think there's actually a very good chance he does get reinstated. So, that being said, if he is reinstated, should the Seahawks bring him in for a third time? Should we jump back on the Josh Gordon Express, take our chances, and hope we can get something out of him this season? 
And this is a really good time to be asking this question after what happened in the Colts game where Penny Hart and Dwayne Eskridge both got concussions. And we don't know if they're going to be out yet or not, but I'm very confident in my belief that they will miss at least one game, possibly two. And even with those guys, we're not amazing at wide receiver. So my first inclination is it might be a good idea to bring Josh Gordon back in. He was not here very long when he was here, but he gave us five games in 2019. 11 targets, 7 receptions, 139 yards. He made one big play against the Panthers. He made two big third down catches against the 49ers. Um, His yards per target number was 12.6. So this is a guy who, over, I will grant you, a small sample size was extremely efficient. And that's a big thing for me. Receivers who are able to both catch passes that go for great distances, and catch a high percentage of their targets. You you will not see receivers average 12 and a half yards a target over the course of a season pretty much ever unless they're a pure deep threat. But the fact that Josh Gordon was able to do that over even a sample size as small as 11 targets tells you that there might really be something between him and Wilson. Now, The question for me is, what does Shane Waldron think? Does he look at Josh Gordon and go, I can use that guy? I think if the answer is yes, you should strongly consider bringing him in. Josh Gordon, if you look at the way he plays, he's a slower but more sure-handed DK Metcalf in some ways. He's, He's got the size... He, he doesn't have the speed, but he does have decent speed, although we don't know exactly where he will be in terms of his fitness when we bring him in. And he's got great hands. He's a reliable target on third down. He runs the kinds of routes that Wilson typically in his career has liked to throw. So I think bringing in a guy like a Josh Gordon would make some sense, especially right now, because of what I said about our injuries. Uh, If you take a look at the wide receiver room right now, we are basically down to Metcalf, Lockett, and Swain, with Eskridge and Hart likely to miss at least one, maybe two games. Now, if you don't bring in Gordon, you could call up Kay Johnson, good possibility, and I like Kay Johnson, but it'll be his first ever NFL game. You could call up Aaron Fuller, and I feel the same way about him that I do about Cade Johnson, although obviously at this point Cade has more upside because he just got here and Aaron Fuller's been around for a little bit, but I like Fuller. He just hasn't really done anything in the NFL yet. And then you have Cody Thompson, who had a good training camp, but I don't know if I see it with him the way I see it with guys like Cade and Aaron Fuller and, of course, Josh Gordon. So that's really the choice to make. You can call up Kay Johnson and Aaron Fuller and rock with them for a couple games, or you can bring in Josh Gordon, rock with him for a couple games, and then when Eskridge and Hart get back, you can see where you stand. So let me know what you guys think down below. This is going to be a really interesting choice we make. I'm sure we're at least considering it. Do we actually move on it? I don't know, but I think think I would do it. It seems like the issues that kept Josh Gordon out of the NFL have likely been pushed back. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that he can't get in trouble again. And as we learned in a somewhat painful way with Alden Smith, sometimes you just want to let this stuff go. But I think I would go ahead and do it. Calling up two guys who have no NFL experience and telling them that they're going to have to play a role in a game uh, just a few days later, I'd rather try to ease those guys in a little more. So what do you guys think, man? Josh Gordon, yay or nay? You want him or are you happy with the practice squad guys we can call up? Or is there maybe another guy you want to bring in off the free agency market? There are other names out there could be but uh let me know what you want to do down below and we'll talk about this more later peace out